So in today's lesson, we're going to look at an example of a word problem that you might encounter that involves utilizing the quadratic formula. So you should know that in grade 12 chemistry, we often encounter um, word problems involving, um, you know, reagents and concentrations where we have to use the quadratic formula in order to solve for some unknowns. So you should know that, you know, the example that I'm choosing here is one of many that I could have chosen. And um, so let's take a look at the example and we'll talk more about it. So first, uh, it says the path of basketball after it is thrown from a height of 1.5 meters above the ground is given by the equation, and here it is, where h is the height in meters. So here's our h, the height in meters, right? Uh, and d is the horizontal distance, right? So we're mapping our height against our distance. And if we want to visualize that, we can create a little diagram. So presumably, you know, the individual who is throwing the basketball, here we go, uh, at a height of around, I guess it must be launched at a height of, you know, a meter and a half, wherever that is, right? And it's going to go do, 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 and land wherever. Um, and hopefully in a basket, maybe, I don't know. Anyways, so... Uh, now, there are several things that we need to consider here. Um, one is that um, when we look at, we want to take a really close look at this equation here and see if it is possible to factor. Because in most cases, factoring is actually a more efficient uh, way to solve and also less prone to error. So what are some cues here in this equation that I can't, fa uh, that I can't use the factoring method to solve? Well, one to me that's obvious is that I see these decimals. Now, could we try to work that out? Sure, probably, but you know, uh, it may be just as efficient to try our quadratic formula. So I see those decimals and that makes me want to avoid factoring. So um, another thing, you know, when I'm going back to the chemistry bit, often, you know, the values of the coefficients of our terms that we get when we construct our quadratic equation will often also be decimals because real life quantities, specifically if we're talking about measurements as we might be in chemistry, then we might expect to see some, uh, some decimal values. All right, so let's carry on and let's see what question they're asking us. But before that, let me just talk about one more thing, which is, you know, we have our height, right? And we also have our horizontal distance. Um, and so let's see what they're asking. They're asking us, how far has the ball traveled horizontally to the nearest tenth of a meter when it lands on the ground? So really, what we want here is we want to know what this coordinate is right here. Uh, and so we need to say, well, when it lands on the ground, what is the value of h? Well, the value of h is going to be 0. So we're really just looking for our x-intercepts or our zeros to solve this, right? Now, we need to remember that we always, typically when we're solving a quadratic, we end up with how many roots? Often, more often than not, we're going to see two roots. So we're going to see two solutions. And then we're going to use those solutions. We're going to use our common sense in the context of the question to help us know which of those solutions is the valid one. Okay, I'm going to create a little bit more room for, for us here. Let me see if I can do that. Here we go. Uh, okay, so um, let's get to it. So I have my equation. I'm just going to make a copy of it. There we go, and continue to make this just a wee bit smaller. Um, and now I can move this up even a little bit more. <clears throat> okay, so all I need to do really here is just, you know, I'm going to substitute in 0 for h because I want to know when the height is zero when it lands on the ground. That is the height. And uh, and so now here I go. So negative 0 0.25 d squared plus 2d plus 
Um, and another thing to notice is, and I'm wondering if you did, uh, notice that the value of our uh, a in this equation is negative. So that makes sense given that our parabola is opening downward. Uh, all right, so now let's analyze our values for a, b, and c here. So I can see that my coefficient of my squared term is this negative uh, 0 0.25, so my a in the quadratic equation or equation is uh, a equals negative 0 0.25. b is always the coefficient of my linear term, which in this case is 2. And c is my constant term, which in this case is 1.5. So I have a, b, and c. Uh, now all I need to do is just remember my quadratic formula and then substitute in. So what I'd like you to do is to practice that skill uh, and then come up with an answer. Take a look at your two solutions and see which one makes sense. And then we'll come back um, and check our answers in a second. So I'm going to pause the video now. I want you to solve this and then we'll come back and check together. Okay, so I'm back now and I've substituted all of my values into the quadratic formula and I get two solutions. I get one that is a negative value and the one that is a positive value. And so in the context of this question, I know that the negative distance doesn't really seem like the correct solution. And so it seems reasonable to say that therefore the ball lands 8.7 meters forward. Oops, and I'm running out of room. So there we have it, right? Now let's analyze for a second what the meaning is of, of uh, this negative 0.69. So I'm going to go way back up here to my original drawing. So you'll remember that, you know, that ball is leaving the person's hand at a height of 1.5 meters, right? But if we were to just analyze this not from a practical perspective, but from a sort of a mathematical perspective, we know that, that we could extend that parabola backward into the negative quadrant. And at some point here, it would cross that x-axis and it would that would give us our root. So that right there represents the spot where if we traced the path of the ba uh, basketball backwards, where it would have begun. Um, so that's all that negative root means. It's just because a function of the fact that there, in this case, there happens to be two roots, uh, but only one of them makes sense in the context of the question. All right, let's look at a set, the second half of this, uh, of this problem. So the second half of this problem says, find the horizontal distance when the basketball is at a height of 4.5 meters above the ground. So let's just, I'm gonna draw that again. So let's just to say that the basketball is gonna go up and then come down again. And so there's a, going to be a point in its flight where it's gonna be at a height of 4.5 meters. And so, you know, really we want to know what D is. What is the value of D when H is 4.5? So how are we going to accomplish that? Well, what we have to do here is we have to say, well, we're, when H is 4.5, what is the value of D? So we need to substitute that value for h into our formula. So what we get as, as a result is 4.5 is equal to negative 0 0.25 d squared plus 2d plus 1.5. So now we have a quadratic equation again, and we also need to solve it. Try to think, well, what makes sense to do here? What I'm hoping that you thought about was the fact that I need to have zero on one side of my quadratic equation if I'm going to solve it. So what I need to do is I need to take that 4.5 and move it to the other side and subtract it. And that will leave me with that zero on the left-hand side of this equation. So negative 0 0.25 d squared plus 2d and then plus for uh, 1.5 minus 4.5 which of course leaves me with minus three 
Uh, so there we have it. So now all I have is just a different quadratic equation and that I can solve using the quadratic formula. So again, I can see here my A value is the same at negative 0 0.25. My B value is 2, but my C value changes to negative 3. So I want you to go ahead and solve this again for practice and then resume the video when you're ready to check your answer and compare it to mine. Okay, so here is my solution. Uh, substituting in my values to the, into the quadratic equation, remembering that there's a positive and a negative solution, I ended up with d equals 2 meters and d equals 6 meters. And so now at this point, how do I decide which of those is the correct answer? I'm supposed to find the horizontal distance when the basketball is at a height of 4.5 meters. And I have two positive values, so how do I exclude one? Well, let's look at the question, or let's look at the diagram. I know that this ball is leaving at a height of 1.5 meters, and it's going to ascend reach that vertex, and then descend again. So it's reasonable that I would have two positive solutions here. There's the, it's, there are two spots along here where it may reach a height of, let's say I'm just sketching this out, maybe 4.5, right? On its ascent and on its descent. So presumably right here, this might be the two meter line. And then down here, this might be the six meter point. So there are two horizontal distances where that ball is at a height of 4.5 meters. So there's an example of where the both roots um, are reasonable answers and, uh, and that we would need to consider both in the context of the question. So look for some practice questions for you to, um, to use and to apply the quadratic formula in solving uh, solving problems because of course we're not learning the math for the sake of math we're uh, though that's super fun but we're also learning it with the idea that it may serve a purpose in helping us to solve uh, solve problems in the real world potentially uh, so look for that and if you have any questions feel free to reach out and contact me